and welcome to the news on CMSTV Online. I'm Claire Taylor and here are some of our main headlines today. Over, this, over the weekend we saw the conclusion of the G20 summit, meeting to discuss the Syria situation. We also have seen David Cameron releasing its new budget for Syria and Tokyo has been announced the 2020 host of the Olympic Games. So the G20 drew to a close over the weekend, but little headway has been made in finding a decision of the political crisis in Syria. Tensions are further heightened in the Security Council between Russia and China and France and the US. Putin from Russia has pledged support to the Assad regime and continues to say that they will support the regime if the US go ahead with military strikes. President Assad denies ordering a chemical weapons attack on his own citizens in the Damascus area on the 21st of August. He's warned the US that if they launch a military strike on Syria, they will receive a severe retaliation, with allies including Iran and Russia. It has been said that Assad has sent a message to the American people warning them not to get involved in another Middle Eastern conflict. Obama faces a difficult battle to win over the international community as well as his own people and vote will go to Congress this Wednesday within the House, within the Senate and the House of Representatives if the Congress vote against Obama to not take military intervention in Syria this could weaken his international standing as president. He has also declined, dismissed rumours that he might take action against the Congress. Obama has also controversially reminded the world of the Rwanda disaster in 1994 which saw the genocide of 800,000 people. As he comparing this to Syria and what might come, we will have to see. But this does coincide with papers this week releasing headlines from Syrian victims of self accusing the West of failing to take decisive action and to save the many victims that have been affected by the recent chemical attacks. Over the last two and a half years, Syria has faced a civil war that has claimed the lives of over 100,000 people. Now is the time to act. US Secretary of State John Kerry has insisted the world cannot continue to ignore the sarin gas attacks that took place recently, killing more than 1,400 Syrians, including up to 400 children. He has dismissed claims that the Assad regime are not linked with the chemical attacks, saying that the evidence is conclusive that they are. However, recent reports released this morning show that a compromise may be on the cards. Russia has issued a proposal for Syria to hand over its chemical weapons to international control. The UK Prime Minister says it's a big step forward if this is genuine and US Barack Obama also says this could be a breakthrough. Although Obama still remains sceptical, he does say that if this does happen, there will no longer be a strike against Syria. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said his Syrian counterpart welcomed his country's proposal. If these plans do fall through, we will be again stuck in a catch-22 situation. Do we sit back and allow chemical weapons to develop and grow in Syria and also the idea of extremism to expand and risk a future attack? Or do we take action and then again increase hostility and risk another war? We'll see how this plays out. Other news, four men involved in the gang rape of Jayoti Singh Pandli on the 16th of December 2012 have been found guilty and now may face the death penalty as it goes to court tomorrow. The rape and death of the 23-year-old physiotherapy student led to widespread unprecedented anger throughout Delhi and sparked a national debate on the treatment of women. As a response, Tough new laws were introduced in March which allow the death penalty to be used in the most extreme cases of rape. Following the court's decision to convict these men, the family of the victim along with many throughout Delhi and the international community are happy with the result. And the victim's father told the Indian media that they now expect the judge to sentence them all to death and only then will they have some closure. We will now take a short break before we head back to the UK news, where some of our main headlines include David Cameron's patriotic defence of Britain and also the burglary on Buckingham Palace.
TV show unravels those things that are happening in our society that people tend to care less about. It's filled with intrigue, it's filled with suspense, and it's filled with lots of wonder. The program that is one of its kind here in Nigeria, the best, and a program that will definitely keep you glued to your TV set. Welcome back to the news on CMS TV Online and now for some of the UK headlines. David Cameron's love letter to the nation after claims that a Russian official undermined Britain's international standing, calling it a small island with little standing. David Cameron launched a patriotic and poetic defence of Britain's achievement, saying Britain was to thank for the abolition of slavery, Britain was to thank for some of the world's best and used invention and also for any sport worth playing. This was perfect timing for David Cameron because recently he's been sidelined by his own parliament in the military intervention bill against Syria which wasn't taken up by Britain. Britain may not be taking military intervention in Syria but David Cameron has announced an additional 53 million in UK funds to go towards medical training and equipment to help civilians targeted by the chemical attacks. Only a few international charities are working in Syria. Médecins Sans Frontières is one of the few organisations working and have reported that despite their best efforts to reach those in need, they are unable to directly, directly target those they want due to government controlled areas. During the civil conflict, millions of people have been left with no access to basic medical care. So previously treatable illnesses like asthma, the people are dying from these conditions because of a lack of basic supplies such as inhalers. Now, the international community are going to have to rethink their aid distribution and ways in which to get supplies to those who are suffering from isolation on all accounts. In other news, the attempted burglary in Buckingham Palace. Two men have recently been, recently been arrested over suspected plans to burgle Buckingham Palace, raising all sorts of security issues. One of the men was found inside one of the state rooms after scaling a 12-foot wall. It's one of the most serious security breaches since Michael Fagan walked into the Queen's chambers in 1982 while she was sleeping. One of the men has been arrested in suspicion of burglary, trespassing and criminal damage, and another man was arrested outside the palace itself. He's been detained on conspiracy to commit burglary. Both men have been released on bail until further inquiry into the investigation. That's all for UK News. You will take a short break and come back for some entertainment and sport. I love London. There's loads to see and plenty to do. You can go shopping, enjoy art, go to the theatre or just grab a bite to eat. Plus it's a great place to study in the open spaces, all with excellent transport links. But where do you stay to enjoy all of this? Well I stay at the Stay Club. The Stay Club is really fun. Cheers. It's close to central London. Thanks. And you can stay as long as you like. It's a great place to meet new friends. Do you mind if I take one of those? Good. <laughs> Let me show you upstairs. The Stay Club is super safe and extremely clean. <laughs> I mean extremely clean. So who stays at the Stay Club? Well, students, young professionals, and so. <laughs> and people who come from all over the world just to have a good time. Hey girls! <laughs> now let me show you my room. This is my room. And my flatmate April. In here we have our own shower, our own cooking space, free Wi-Fi, a large desk and the beds. I love the beds. 
as you can see. It's quite cosy in here. Oh, that would be my friends. Now I gotta go, but you guys should definitely stay. Welcome back to the news on CMS TV online. And now for some of our sporting news. Tokyo are celebrating over the weekend as they were announced the new host of the 2020 Olympic Games. They won the bid against Madrid and Istanbul and this is the next time they will be hosting the Games since 1964. Boris Johnson sent over his congratulations and encouraged the country to celebrate for now because they will have years of hard work to prepare for, wishing them the best of luck. Tokyo's defeat after over at Istanbul came over concerns arose about Istanbul's political situation and also of neighbouring country Syria as well. As well as this, Istanbul has suffered a series of drug scandals with many of its athletes being connected with drugs. This, on the other hand, is where Tokyo has really proved their strong point. None of their Olympians or Paralympians have ever been accused or found of being on drugs. During a time where drug scandals of international athletes litter the newspapers, this is a positive example set by Tokyo and looks like a step in the right direction. Tokyo has released plans to build 10 new permanent sports venues which should be, should be built by 2019 just in time to host the Rugby World Cup. The Prime Minister's address um, following the presentation, he attempted to dispel anxiety over the nuclear, nuclear Fukushima disaster which took place in 2011. Fears have been that the, that the plant has been leaking radiation after the earthquake and tsunami which hit the country in 2011. He has said though that it has never done and will never do any damage to Tokyo. After a depressing, depressing time in Tokyo, this momentous effort, momentous event will unite the country with a new sense of hope, which comes as a welcome break after previous misfortunes. On to some of our entertainment news. Strictly Come Dancing hit our screens on Saturday night. The eagerly awaited BBC show opening night lived up to all its glamorous expectations with show-stopping dance routines, glittery outfits and live performances from Jessie J and Rod Stewart. The show highlights included last year's winners British gymnast Louis Smith and his partner Flavia who proved they hadn't lost their sparkle. And also, the celebrities were given their partners and performed for the first time in front of the audience. The popular BBC dance contest pulled in over 500,000 viewers over its rival, X Factor, which shows in the same night with an overlap of 10 minutes on ITV. Next week, we will see the, celebrities, see the celebrities perform live for the first time. And now on to the weather. After a wonderful summer of heat waves, it looks like our hot weather is coming to an end. This week we'll be experiencing some patches of rain and temperatures feeling cool comparatively with other weeks. This weekend looks to follow similar trends with temperatures not reaching any higher than 18 degrees with intervals of rain. However, some sunny spells do look to be showing in the earlier stages of next week. Thank you for watching the CMS TV News today. matters? Has your application been denied on more than one occasion? Whatever your issue, immigration, crime, employment, family or housing, ANC solicitors are here to help. We provide legal support and expertise that you can depend on. Call us now on 020 3581 2097. We pride ourselves on offering our clients a full commitment in providing a favourable outcome to their claim. We specialise in immigration and human rights law and we have an understanding of the need to provide affordable legal services. Call ANC Solicitors now on 020 3581 2097 or visit us at ancsolicitors.com. ANC Solicitors, legal support at your reach. <laughs> 